Now the great news about gas stoichiometry is that if you understand basic gravimetric stoichiometry that we did in the last lesson, if you understand the gas laws, and specifically if you understand the ideal gas law, then you already know how to do gas stoichiometry because you just have to put those two pieces together. See, so far in stoichiometry and gravimetric stoichiometry, we've dealt with entities that were being measured by mass. So we were weighing things, reactants and products. So we had to go from grams to moles and then moles to moles and moles to grams. Well, now we just have entities that are gases where we're measuring their quantities as uh, a volume of a gas at a certain pressure and temperature. So we have to use the ideal gas law in order to figure out how many moles we have. Or maybe I'm looking for the volume of a gaseous product that's being produced. And in those cases, then again, I have to use the ideal gas law. So let's see what that looks like. If we have 300 grams of propane that's burning in a gas barbecue, what volume of oxygen at standard ambient temperature and pressure is required for the reaction? So there's a few things that I need to know here. First of all, I need to know what propane is. So propane I know is C3H8, it's a gas. And if it's burning, that means it's reacting with oxygen. And we would expect you to know that this is a combustion reaction. So that means that the products, if I'm burning a hydrocarbon, the products are gonna be carbon dioxide and water vapor. And then I need to balance this reaction. You have to have to have to have a balanced chemical reaction whenever you're doing stoichiometry. So let's see, we've got three carbons here, three carbons here, eight, so four hydrogens here, four times two is eight. And then I've got six plus another four, I have 10 uh, oxygens over here. So five times two will give me 10 oxygens over here too. So now I can do my stoic. So let's put the inf information that I know with the stuff that it belongs with. I've got 300 grams of propane, so this is a mass, and I want to figure out what volume of oxygen at SATP will be uh, required. So I have my mass of propane. I can use that to find my number of moles of propane. And this is just gravimetric, stoic, right? I can use my molar mass formula for that. Then I need to figure out how many moles of oxygen will be present. So that'll be step two, and I'll use my mole ratio for that. And then here I'm going from moles to volume of a gas, so I can use ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. And you could use molar volume of gas at SATP here too, but I kind of prefer the ideal gas law because it'll always work, and we will give you the values for uh, temperature and pressure at SATP in your data book. So this will be step three. Okay, let's tackle these. So step one, I need the molar mass of propane because I need to take the mass, 300 grams, divided by the molar mass. 300 grams divided by 44.11 grams per mole gives me 6.8 dot 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 moles of propane. So we can put that up here, 6.8. Now we need to turn those moles of propane, figure out what the amount of moles of oxygen will be that will be burned at the same time. So I'll use the mole ratio for that, 6.8 moles of propane. Now I need my propane to cancel, so it's going to be on the bottom and it has a coefficient here of one. So I've got one mole of propane that's consumed every time five moles of oxygen are consumed also. So here then propane and the propane cancel and 6.8 times five divided by one gives me 34 dot 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 moles of oxygen. So 34 and some change. And then finally, 
I need to turn these moles of oxygen into a volume at SATP. So step three, I'm going to use ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. I'm looking for my volume, so I need to get it by itself. V is equal to NRTP. So my number of moles that I have is 34 with its change. And these values here I can look up in my data book. So I need the values of R, ideal gas constant, 8.314 liters kPa per moles Kelvin. I also need the temperature and pressure at SATP. So standard ambient temperature and pressure has a temperature of 298.15 Kelvin and a pressure of 100 kPa. So of those, my temperature goes on the top, 298.15 Kelvin divided by 100 kPa. So now we can do the math. I'm using all the digits that came with my 34 and my volume here will be 842.9 liters of oxygen at SATP. Now, how many sig digs do I get? Looks like I get three sig digs. So we have to round this guy to 843 liters. I always include what the identity of the thing is when we're doing stoichiometry. So those are liters of oxygen. We can do one more example. Hydrogen is produced when sodium metal is added to water. What mass of sodium is necessary to produce 20.0 liters of hydrogen at SATP? So let's figure out what the reaction is first. Sodium metal is added to water and hydrogen is produced, but that can't be the only product. I must also have, this is basically a single replacement, right? The sodium is trading places with the hydrogen. So hydroxide will be the anion. So sodium will end up with the hydroxide to make sodium hydroxide. And that is soluble in water, so it will be aqueous. Now I need to make sure this is balanced. And it's not. I've got two hydrogens on the left, but I've got three on the right. So I can fix this with a two here. Then I'm going to need a two here and a two here. So I've got two sodiums, four hydrogens, two times two is four, two oxygens, two oxygens. Now we're good. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the mass of sodium. This is my unknown necessary to produce 20 liters of hydrogen at SATP. So here my volume is 20 liters at SATP. So now I'm gonna to have to find my moles of hydrogen first, and this is a volume of a gas, so I'll have to use the ideal gas law for that first step. Then the mole ratio to find my moles of sodium and that'll be step two. And then step three will be my molar mass formula. Okay, let's do it. So step one, I'm looking for moles. So I need to get little n by itself. That means I need to divide by RT on both sides. N is equal to PV over RT. So we just looked up these values for SATP, so we don't need to do it again. Pressure at SATP is 100 kPa. The volume is 20.0 liters. R is 8.314 liters kPa per mole Kelvin. And my temperature is 298.15. Kelvin. So that gives me 0 0.8 moles of hydrogen. So now we can use the mole ratio to figure out how many moles of sodium would be required to make that many moles of hydrogen. These are moles of hydrogen. I need to figure out one mole of hydrogen is produced every time two moles of sodium are consumed. So we're multiplying this by two. 
which gives me 1.6 and some change moles of sodium. And then step three, let's turn these moles of sodium into a mass of sodium. So to find the mass, I can take my molar mass multiplied by my number of moles. Now a common mistake here is to multiply the molar mass of sodium by its coefficient. You never do that. You don't multiply a molar mass by a coefficient. Stoichiometry, the coefficient only comes into play during this mole ratio step. So the molar mass of sodium is 22.99. That's it. Doesn't get multiplied by two. So my molar mass 22.99 grams per mole multiplied by my number of moles, which was 1.6, and I still have the rest of those digits in my calculator. And that gives me, I've got three sig digs here, so 37.1 grams of sodium. So if I wanna produce 20 liters of hydrogen at SATP, I need to react 37.1 grams of sodium.